What is good? We're back. We got a, we got a, we got a tripod. We got a tripod. We've been a, we've been a bipod show here for a little while. Big Co's been in and out, but tonight we got a, we got a esteemed colleague, a, a, one of the best in the biz here. The uh, we called him the uh, maestro of movement, and and that's what we're gonna <laughs> stick with here. Uh, Angelo at Angelo underscore fantasy. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks, thanks again for having me back. I know it's late by you guys, but uh, I appreciate it, man. It's gonna be fun. A hundred percent. So, Angelo is a is a, is a little bit more of a prospect guy than us. So we wanted to bring him on here and kind of familiarize our our listeners and our squad with uh, kind of what is going on with the incoming 2022 class. And we know that you know probably some of these guys, at least one or two, will be like we thought this guy was coming out and and maybe might go back. Um, so, you know, we're not we're not trying to figure that out here, but we're just going to talk about all the guys that are eligible and seeming like that are going to go out here. And uh, our guy, Angelo, is going to uh, school you up here on on the hows and the what's of this class. So you can you can catch Angelo at his website at Angelo analysis dot com. Uh, go over there and check that out. A lot of great stuff going on. Hasn't got to the 2022 stuff yet, but a lot of great stuff for 20. Are, are you back to 19 on that thing? All the way. Ah, there's a few. I started in 19, so a lot of the 19 stuff I just have on my Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then all the 20, 2020 and the 2021 stuffs all up there still. So strong. All that stuff right now is free, so it's just you know you can just go in and look at it. Yeah. Strong Twitter follow. Yeah. Angelo Appreciate underscore that. fantasy. A hundred percent. So let's get it. Let's get it rolling right away. Um, let's just. How, how does this? Angela, how does this class stack up with, uh, you know, last year's class or the year before? Like, what are we dealing with here? Just kind of all around with the class. For sure. It's funny because, I mean, dude, like last year's class, like this current class that's in the NFL right now, it just came in, totally spoils us, right? I mean, we have a, at every position, that quarterback, at running back, receiver, tight end with Kyle Pitts. I mean, we're spoiled with a, with a crop of pretty elite talent you know, in my opinion, I, I think, you know, Pitts and Lawrence Fields and, you know, Bateman Smith, Chase Waddle, Harris, ETN, Javante Williams. Like we have a ton of really, really good um, fantasy relevant dudes yeah. too. Um, this class that's coming up in 22 reminds me a little bit about the, like, like the 2019 class, um, especially at running back where we don't really have a, like a dude, like we don't have like that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some guys who are pretty solid. Like we have some some solid some solid players. I think that will play in the NFL for a long time and, and have um, fairly sizable roles. But we don't have a Najee Harris or a Travis Etienne or like going back. We don't have a Jonathan Taylor. You know, right. we don't have that guy. But it's a good class um, and it's a deep class. I think that's the one thing we didn't really have last year. Um, that's the one thing I think this class has on it is we have a lot of guys, I think that are going to be mid round, like mid round gems potentially, um, that right. this last class didn't have, obviously, um, obviously Mitchell has been pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's Ramondre that, like, playing right now. Yeah. Ramondre has been solid, but I think there's some guys that are of that caliber or higher, um, in this class that are going to be interesting finds because of the traits they have um the, the nfl might really like especially if the you know the combine's happening this year too so yeah um that's gonna be really interesting to see where these guys kind of stack up and what they're doing and, and how they really look um but yeah it's a really interesting class from top to bottom all right and and is there is there one position group that's stronger than the other yeah receivers really really strong um i don't think it's as strong as last year because i mean I, chase and chase and smith are both my my wide receiver one and two sure. in the same and tier. Smith is being special player. Uh, seemingly, you know, overshadowed by how great Chase has been. Yeah, and Smith man. has been really freaking good. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I mean, the Bengals passing offense is clicking on all cylinders, which I didn't think would happen this early with Joe Burrow's ACL from last year. Sure. They look fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, next year is interesting because so this twenty twenty two class we have a uh, Traylon Burks. Obviously, I think. For me, Burks is kind of the clear cut one because he has that unicorn type skill set. Like he's he's the guy that I think, you know, is a walk off the bus guy. 
put him first. Sense. You put him first. Yeah. Let him come. Yeah, off. a six three, two hundred twenty five pounds has the fastest recorded time of any ball carrier in, in college football this year. Yeah, I think and I saw. actually fast and faster than anyone in the NFL this year too. So at six three, two twenty five. Yeah, I think I saw twenty three miles an hour or something along those lines. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and he's an interesting interesting prospect because of you know he plays an arkansas system that's very very run first mm-hmm. um and very one read centric so it's you know if he's not the primary read he's probably not getting the ball and he plays in the slot a lot i think he fits best there because of his current skill set i think he's not a very nuanced technical player right now but I mean, he's 6'3", 225, runs like a deer, really good mover, too. Mm. I mean, he can make you miss. You better drink Gotta drink. Um, he can make you miss. And he's going to be an absolute, like, a project for an NFL team. Hands that seem pretty good. Into, yeah, hands are great. I mean, he, I think he, I think someone said he's going to have the biggest hand size recorded at the receiver position in NFL history. Uh, they, they said that they're 10 inches wide or something like that. He has to yeah, wear a dude, special 5XL yeah. glove. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, on one of the, on one 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 of the broadcasts, they're like, he's got, he's got rackets. He's got tennis rackets for dude, hands. He literally has tennis rackets for hands. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And he's the best jump ball receiver in the class, too. So he has the run after High catchability. Point. High point the ball. I mean, he has a lot of tools and traits that you just like to see, you know, your primary receiver have. Yeah. Um, he's just a he's a fun player to watch. Yeah. Um Garrett Garrett Wilson's also up there, I think, too. Um, Drake London. Um, you know, it's sad to see him kind of go down with that fractured ankle, but he's another guy. I think if it wasn't for that, I think he'd be the first one drafted. If he actually checks out medically Drake London. Yeah. If he checks out medically. Um, and, you know, can post the pro day um, and does well and looks good and is moving pretty well like like he was pre-injury, um, I think he could be the first one draft. And I think there's a – I think him and London – I mean, sorry, him, Burks, and Wilson are the top three in this class. And you have, you know, other guys like, you know, Olave, um, Jameson Williams, Jahan Dotson. You have a, a crop of really interesting players. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see four of them go in the first round. Yeah, so you you mentioned Burks, Wilson, and, and London. Those those are probably around the top three and most people's top three. Would you consider that pr- fairly accurate? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think looking at it now preliminarily, I think those are the those are the three. And it's funny because they're all very different receivers and they play different positions too, which is funny. Yeah. Um. So you, you know, go ahead. You said Burks was kind of a, a bigger guy, but plays the slot. What what, what kind of what's what's Wilson uh, Garrett Wilson at OSU and and London and Drake London's build at USC? What are they kind of like? What kind of players are they? Um, Wilson's kind of like a T.Y. Hilton type player, um, where he's going to play movement Z. Um, he's going to be you know sent downfield. He's going to be running timing routes in the intermediate areas of the field. Um, he's going to be your go-to guy in the NFL offense. That's what he is, man. And he's not an overly big dude, but I mean, he's a guy that's a chain mover um, and that has a lot of skills, especially when the ball's in the air. I mean, his, his ball skills are top of the class. Yeah. Um, and then Drake London, bigger body, man, like 6'4", 6'5", yeah. 220 pounds. I mean, he's, you know, he's a big dude, but he's really fluid. Um, kind of like his old teammate, Michael Pittman, too. Um, just very fluid guys, athletic um, can provide few after the catch, um, but he's a outside. He's an alpha X type receiver. Yeah, it doesn't you know, take Cor- long. Cortland, it, nope. Cortland Sutton, um, Cortland Sutton, Michael Putman is the guy yeah. I, I kind of think that he. I like he the Sutton count like. there. Yeah, yeah, but he's a he's a you know all three of those guys I think are um, immediate focal points in the NFL offense. Um, and they're going to be you know those three I think going to be absolute studs. Yeah, it doesn't take long watching a USC broadcast for somebody to tell you that Drake London was on the basketball team. Uh, so. No, it does not. It <laughs> takes about, I think, over under two minutes on that. Yeah, but I, sure. I've definitely watched a little bit of him this year, and he's he's a lot of fun to watch. I think he's first in contested catches um, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. out of everybody, and is is just unfortunate situation there for him. But he's, I don't has he been playing football long? I don't even I don't even know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I haven't dove too deep okay. into his his overall background, but I mean, he's just dude's an athlete at that. Size. It seemed like I kind of knew about the other guys, but he came out of nowhere for me. Like I didn't really, I didn't really know too much about Drake London, and then all of a sudden, I, he was just was like, "Who is that monster?" Like, yeah, it was, it's funny because he was on my, uh, he was on my radar once. Um, like Slovis, you know, uh, he kind of started coming on, and I'm like, "Man, like this, this London dude is pretty solid." And then he just blew up 
yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, Number one and first rounder in the name draft for sure. London Drake's strong, strong name. name. Dude, that's a, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a house of a name. You right can there. even so. flip it and they know who you're talking about. Is it stronger though? If you flip it, is the name stronger Drake or not? London, London Drake. London Drake. London Drake seems like a... Oh, like version British, of Drake, the London, like a British, a British pop star, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I'm London Drake. <laughs> I'm London Drake. No, that's American Drake. That's that's, that's uh, I guess or like a movie star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's Drake's funny. like Canadian Drake. He and is then... Canadian. That's correct. <laughs> he is. He is. All right. So, who are some who are who are some other guys in the receiver class who maybe are down not not at the bottom, but maybe aren't quite in everybody's mouths just yet that you could see. Uh, being a little bit more of a household name and, you know, by the end of when, by the time draft come draft time comes around, could be somebody that sure. everybody's kind of talking about. I know you mentioned uh, dots in there and I, I can't mm-hmm. believe that guy doesn't get a little bit more uh, run because every he's, Cause he's nobody playing, cares. Right. That's in we got play, that's in here. <laughs> he's playing at a deficit with Clifford and he's just right. he's just I was just going to say the same thing about Burks, like anybody who's catching passes from <sighs> Felipe Franks. What a bummer. Um, but. Um, dots in there. I, I I love watching that guy play. He seems to be like their whole receiving game. He could sit, seemingly do whatever you need him to do. So is is, right. is he somebody there for you? And then you got a couple other guys that that we should watch out for. Yeah, uh, Dotson is, and we talk about it before the show. I mean, Dotson's that guy for me in terms of why are we talking about this yeah. dude enough? Like we would, we should be, you know, he should be in a breath with some of those other guys. Um, I think in that second, third tier of receivers in this year's class, where guys just. I can play, you right. know, if, like as like, I'm not a big Nick Sirianni fan, but he always says the guy can play football. That's what he says all the time. He can play football. I mean, the dude, the dude's a gamer. Sometimes it's as um, simple as that though. It's, really? It's, isn't it? We, we overcomplicate like, it sometimes. And he's just a, he is a damn good football player. Yeah. But what about um, the breakout age? <laughs> oh God. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> but what about the A dots? The A dot the breakout Burks. age. Too many manufactured touches. It's an inflated value. <laughs> Crushing oh, yards man. per catch, but anyway. Yeah, he is actually, I think. I'm digressing to the mean. Uh please continue. But um but no, um yeah, he's Dotson's one of those guys. I think the other guy, the two other guys, Chris Olave, he's kind of get over he's getting overshadowed by, you know, Wilson and Smith and then Jigba. Um, but also, you know, Jameson Williams. I mean, when we talk about overshadowed. Like he went to Ohio State, couldn't get in the field. Obviously, mm-hmm. I mean that's the my, that's one of the best, res, you know that that can rival the the Bama receivers. Yeah, you literally just said Olave's seen. getting overshadowed. Who, if he would have came out last year, would have been a, yeah. a fairly high pick. And you know now yeah. nobody's really even seems to talk about him all that much. Right. Yeah. And then uh, Jamison Williams in that same breath. I think he's. I mean, he has three straight hundred plus yard games. I mean, he's he's kind of raw, but I mean he's a physical specimen he's he's built he's built like cd lamb he doesn't play like cd Mm -hmm. but he's built like that tall lanky kind of that wiry strong guy um who's really good after the catch uh i think he's like six two like um little under 200 pounds and he's at bama Um, right but he yeah he's a bama he's the he's bama's leading receiver right now um but yeah he's a stud i think he's gonna be someone that we we look and say oh well why didn't he produce earlier well, we talk about that all the time, and sometimes, you know, circumstance, especially with COVID, too. Wait, is there um, context to breakout age? Get out of here with context. Know, right? Come crazy. on. Yeah, I know. It's crazy <laughs> stuff. But, um, but, yeah, I'm a big fan of Jamison Williams. I think he's going to uh, turn some heads. I think if he, you know, times like I think he will, I think he'll be a, a sub 4-4 four, four guy or right around 4-4 four, four flat. Um, he's going to be a first rounder probably. I mean, in my mind, he's going to be a first round pick. Okay. I think he's going to move up boards Could- exponentially, just like Brandon Ayuk did after his spectacular combine. Yeah. Um, and draft uh, status. I, I, I think, you know, yeah. we, we talked about a little off air, like you said, like there's a, there's certain guys that for whatever reason in the fantasy circle don't quite get uh, elevated. And when you look at the, the, the pro scouts and the people in, in, in the league there, they were, they always had Tony as a number one. They always had, uh, Brandon Ayuk as a first round draft pick. You know, those guys kind of had those guys elevated and we kind of kept them down below the surface. So I think, you know, there's plenty of guys, like you said, trait wise that um, 
you know, for whatever reason, we overlook him. Is do you think we Robinson, did not overlook Tony? No, just no, no, throw no. That out I'm there. just saying we, we as a Tony, we here. as a fantasy evaluation community, nope, not us win with um, them. But <laughs> do you think that that Robinson could be a candidate for a guy who goes back, or because of that, you know, maybe he's not quite as high as maybe everybody thinks, or maybe he thinks he could be. Who uh, Robinson? Which one? Uh, at Alabama, Robinson, Jameson. Oh, James oh, Williams. Yeah, oh, James Williams. Williams. Sorry, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, there's also a Brian Robinson who's a running back. Too, right, right. Funny. Um, no, I think he comes out. Okay. I think mean, he kind of has to because this is kind of his prove it year of hey, I'm gonna transfer, I'm gonna ball out, transfer, balled out. See you. You're out there. Yeah. You know. I like it. Um, and I think he's too. I mean, he's gaining so much steam within the within you know the NFL Knicks, and they're they're gonna. I think he's. I think he's gonna be a first round pick. I think people might be surprised by yeah. that, but I, I'm not in the slightest because of his skill set, what he can do. He's really raw, but I think at the, you know, the back end of that first round, there's gonna be some contending teams licking their chops to get a hold of a guy that looks like that has his skill set at, at that kind of value, in my opinion. All right, I like it. Well, let's let's keep it right on moving. We'll switch over to the running back side of this thing. Um, you said kind of, you know, the wide receivers were the were the star of this draft here and the running backs seem like a lot of maybe hall of very goods. Maybe we're not quite at the elite athleticism of where we need to be with some of the running backs, but it's, it's not to, not to shit on or, or take anything away from these guys. I think there's some really good backs, just nobody maybe quite that's transcendent athletically, which kind of is the, the last step to really put you on that elite level. Um, so yeah. is that, is that kind of how you view this? Yeah, no, it's actually pretty accurate. I mean, I think we've been we've been spoiled the last couple of years. I mean, we had you know we had the Jonathan Taylor class, um, mm-hmm. and obviously he's spectacular. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins was hurt, and then DeAndre Swift and a couple of other guys who are pretty dynamic players and that dynamic dynamic athletically. Um, and then you know this is kind of like the 2019 class where it's like Dave Montgomery is probably the best player out of that class overall, mm-hmm. um, but then you mm-hmm. just have a bunch of guys who are you know pretty good and dave montgomery just pretty good Mm -hmm. he's not you know he's not a top 10 player you know he's a good football player right um josh jacobs you can kind of lump into that same category bunch of solid and improving guys you know yeah and yeah and strong assets on your dynasty team you know yeah yeah these are guys that are gonna you know take a big chunk of you know Touch here and volume. Just because they're not the elite of the, just because they're not the cornerstone player necessarily doesn't mean they don't have a big role to play right, on your right. fantasy team, which at the end of the day is, you know, what we're still trying to find. So don't be discouraged that maybe those guys aren't going to be like the, the one one of your dynasty drafts, but that these are still good players. They're not going right. to be top five startup picks, but not every player that people get so caught up in like only caring about who's the best of the best. And it's like you can only have so many of those players on your team. You need other guys and like just looking at right. the depth chart of running backs like it's just scarce so if you can find a guy like a david montgomery or josh jacobs who aren't the most gifted athletically but are really good running backs and have really good running back traits they're just so valuable and hard to find everyone's trying to trade for a running back like you can right. get good value if, if you have those guys and 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 so you know a lot of people are like is it even worth looking into the 22 class because it's all about the 23 class but it's like it is worth looking into and keeping your yeah, 22 man. picks, right? Yeah, no, I agree. Because I think what's going what's gonna to end up happening, like when we talk about guys like Brees Hall, I mean, he's going to, there's guys that just command a super high touch share, right? There's guys that are just not like built to not be committee guys. Yeah. And like we kind of saw with Dave Montgomery is, well, he, that was him, three down workhorse, finally got that role, exploded, and was an RB1. It was RB, what, four last year? RB5? Yeah. Nuts, right? right. Brees Hall's in that same vein, and anyway, at the same school. Same type of workhorse. I mean, this is a guy, I think he has, I think he has the call, like, NCAA record for consecutive games of the touchdown. It's like 19 um, or something? It's, it's like nine, it's going on 20 almost. Right. I think you're right. right. Yeah. And that's just who he is, man. He's a three down workhorse. Is he that? Is he an uber talented guy? Is he? No, he's not Jonathan Taylor. You know, he's not a super talented athlete. But like I said before, this is a good football player that a coach is going to trust be put in three down to three down situations. Uh, that's a big deal. Then you have guys like, you know, you have, like I say, it's filler. Mm-hmm. We're talented kid. I think he's a better receiver right now than he is a runner. Dynamic athlete. More dynamic athlete, I think, than Brees Hall is. I think that's what they'll test at. Um, 
But I think too, I mean, he'll have more of a, I think a pass catching role early on. Um, and then we, we, we might see him, you know, get, get some rushing share there too. And then kind of Walker, I think on the opposite of Spiller, more of a, um, more of a runner than receiver. Yeah. Um, and what he's done this year has been spectacular for Michigan State. It's kind of elevated that whole program and, and what Mel Tucker, Tucker has done there. Um, but I, I like him too. I think, you know, looking at him and his game, it's, I think he's going to be one of those, uh, like a two down player. I don't think we'll see him play on third downs early on in his career. I think he's a two down player right now, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Right. You know, we, we don't have to have guys that are three down workhorses there. You no, know, you can have plenty of success um, in a two down role in the NFL primarily. Um, but I think that's kind of him. And then, you know, Kyron Williams is kind of rounding out that group who's probably the most well-rounded of that whole crew yeah. for being honest. Right. Maybe the most um, athletic. Definitely. Yeah. The most, could be. Seems like the most athletic. I yeah. Mean, great pass catcher seemingly. Yeah. He's got yeah, great pass catcher. He, even though he's, you know, of a smaller stature, he's the best pass protector in this class and the best pass protector position in football, yeah. including football. And uh, that's That'll get you on the field. Deal. Yeah. That's going to keep you on the field for three downs um, or at the very least keep you on the field for a third down. You know, we see guys have just unbelievably long careers as just their dumb backs like Giovanni Bernard, James White. Yeah. Like these guys are hanging around in the full rosters because for they sure. can do two things. They can catch the football and protect the pass. Right. I, and right? I, I would have to think that Kyron is better than those guys, right? I mean, he. I, mean, I think he is. Gio was great there for yes. for a while, um, and and was really good coming out of college. And you know, is is in his thirties now. And and Mixon came in and kind of, you know, nicks what Gio maybe could have gotten right. towards. But I mean, yeah, right. I would almost. Right. I I, I kind of it's early on, and I haven't watched a ton of them. But he did. You know, you mentioned the receptions he's had. He had thirty five last year and thirty six already this year in less games. He had a. 211 attempts last year, which is nothing to scoff at. Average 5.3 yards a carry. He's estimated to run like a 4-4-4, and you see that on the tape. Like, he looks right. like he can pull away, and the manipulation in the second level, like, the dude can move. And to me, and he's, but he's not the biggest guy. I think he's listed at 199, but you see a ton of, like, goal line touchdowns. And I would almost, like, do you, do you I get a little Austin Eckler feel from this dude. Does that... Is that a decent that's old a comp? really good? Huh? I mean, that's a really good comparison if we're being on it. Um, I think we'll have the draft capital that Austin Eckler didn't have, but but like a I third down back who can do more and, and can really be yeah. explosive and, and convert uh, uh, short 100%, goal line stuff 100%. And, and be at he's like, gonna be, I think, what we wanted Clyde Edwards Hilaire to be. Um, similar skill set, similar build. More electric but, you know, though than Clyde, but not. I think so. I think physical. there's a little more juice than a little more juice than Clyde does, but I think Clyde might have been a touch better, touch better of a rusher coming out of college in terms of feel. Um, but um, it depends on like system fit too, right. you know. Um, and that's a big deal. Do, do, are they going to throw the running back? Obviously, Kansas City doesn't really throw the running back. That's that's not what yeah. They do, until right? recent, until this last game, and recently they're kind of maybe figuring that out that this is their their offense will be yeah, better run kinda, if we could just get these smaller, uh-huh. shorter touches. And I, you know, yeah. it's a bummer that Clyde wasn't in there to reap those benefits because I think that's his strong suit as well. But I think, oh, 100%. I think you hit that's it on why the I head. Think they drafted him. Yeah, yeah. I think you hit it on the head there with it being important where you get the system you get drafted to or the ecosystem as mm. as uh, you like to talk about absolutely where, you know what these guys are going to be able to do and how they're going to be able to do it and do they get put into the right fit and get the right usage can really you know take you from being a stud year one or a dud year one you know it's just kind of right um kind of how that goes like not to say javante certainly not a, a dud by any means and you're excited what you can get but like he's not winning you too much this particular year, right. whereas and Najee Harris, tough, yeah, it, you know, yeah. isn't necessarily showing maybe some of the explosion that Javante Williams is showing you when he can't get going, but he's he could win you the league this year. So, and yeah, and that's what we're kind of looking at too. Is like I think sometimes we get too kind of caught up in the glitz and glamour of mm-hmm. okay, this guy looks super explosive. This guy looks this guy's the sexier pick, but like. Dude, like Najee Harris is getting like 20, 25 touches a game, and he's playing behind one of the worst offensive lines in football. That's just a hodgepodge of dudes. And getting better. The young, yeah, young I, uh, group. Uh, I, I like Kendrick Green though for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, I think he's been he's been good for a rookie. 
But a lot of a lot of I mean, yeah, I mean, the guys, yeah. yeah, the guys that the guy could win you your league. Right. I mean, Williams could too if we see Melvin Gordon. Right. Go and and we've kind of said so that a lot good. that Williams could definitely be a league winner for you if you could just get a slight role change or an injury. He's the, bursting at the seams. You're just you, he's in the system and he qu- can't quite be the guy yet. And <laughs> yeah, it's tough because Melvin Gordon has been bad. Right. Either. Exactly. Exactly. People like are getting people are like. Javon Williams clear cut the best. He sure like he's good. He's a good running back, but like we're Melvin Gordon isn't washed. He's up a pro. Melvin me. Gordon's he's, a pro, and it's, it's, he's a veteran. Right. Man, he looks good. He's he does his job, does it well. I mean, right. I mean, there's no reason Dual to not. Threat. You know. Yeah. 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 Ex. Hundred percent. Exactly. So, um, I guess a little bit more with the running backs, real quick. Has we don't necessarily need to put him in an order, but a guy like Walker. Um, who came out of seemingly nowhere this year, transferred from Wake, um, like you said, doing big things with Mel Tucker here. Um, and, you know, there's not a whole lot of people maybe standing out to be the Heisman. If he wins the Heisman this year because he puts up a ridiculous amount of yards and really nobody else, there's no great quarterback play going on necessarily. You know, maybe could he be, since he's the newest thing and wins a Heisman, could he be playing himself into the RB1 in this class? Or, or do you not think that that's possible? Um, For fantasy, no. But for the NFL and how they view him as a player, potentially. Um, because I think if you see a guy like that, and he's been, he's been playing banged up too. I think he hurt his ankle in the last game. But if you see a guy like that and, you know, if he interviews well and he tests well and he's healthy, yeah, I could see him being, you know, I can see him being the first running back taken. Would I take him as the first running back if I was a GM? No, but I think they're all really close. Yeah. Um, just like we saw in 2020. I mean, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was the first one drafted. Right. Sometimes it's about need and scheme fit. And, and sometimes you get it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and how the yeah, and how the GM and how the GM and head coach see their offense and their offensive corners see, see them going in, in what direction. Yeah. And obviously the Chiefs wanted to get a running back that was a good pass catcher, good field for zone blocking. They got that in Edwards Hilaire, but you know, they're they kind of neutered him a little bit, right. in my opinion. Uh I I I thought he took way too much heat in terms of people be like, Oh, he's you know, it's, it's not a bad pick. Would I have picked him? They had no, I'd have much rather had Jonathan Taylor, right. but, but Jonathan Taylor wasn't a great fit for a zone running scheme, mm-hmm. a primary zone run scheme. And that's okay. Right. Like coming out of, he going to Wisconsin power, Dude, a lot of gap stuff. People would be pissed at Jonathan Taylor. They, they would be calling like Jonathan Taylor. Not that he wouldn't be better than Clyde Edwards. Hilaire is in this offense because he's just a better player, but like they wouldn't be feeding him like they feed him at times in Indianapolis pretty much ever. Right. And so people would he be, wouldn't be the focal point of the offense in Kansas City. And that's right. the one thing that you want. If you the one thing I always say about running back, especially in fantasy, is you want the guys that are focal points of their offense. Right. That's what you want, right? You want the Alvin Kamara's, right? You, know? you want the Christian McCaffrey's, right? You want the Najee Harris's. Who this is the engine, right? Right, like right. Dave Montgomery for crying out loud, he he's the engine of the Bears who's on the field. Yeah, he's their best offensive player. Zeke for that's a long time was the engine. Them. Zeke you know? too, right? And that's the thing is is no matter what we think of these players, the NFL thinks higher than than we do, right. and that matters because they're the one giving them the ball. Right. So. Uh, I think that could happen this year with, um, you know, Walker Hall in particular. Those two guys could could you know work themselves into a super sizable workload. Yeah. Um, right off the bat, make themselves some money and. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's kind of do the same thing we do with the wide receivers here. Give us a couple names um, that are you know aren't necessarily big names now, but the time and, and getting the love. But at at the time by the time the draft rolls around, could be you know people that everybody's like oh i love this guy i love this guy this guy's awesome um sure yeah i think there's three guys in particular i think that are um that are pretty interesting in the middle rounds i think two of them have a good shot at at mid early day two capital and that's uh zach charbonnet i i think he's for sure you know he came into michigan as one of the highest rated running back recruits in the nation um you know big dude six one about 225 pounds you know he has the size speed combination that you like to look for if you are a downhill football team. 
he didn't have that, you know, he didn't have great success at Michigan. Now he's at UCLA and, you know, his first couple weeks, he was just running rampant. Yeah. I mean, he was just running over the whole nation. Chip had him rolling. Um, yeah, he did. And I think he's a, he's going to be an interesting one too. Cause I think he might test the best out of this whole group. That's kind of what I was going to end with. There, um, he, he seemed like and his size in particular. Right. I think that's what, I think that's what people are really going to look at. And that's going to, you know, I think he could play him. He could play himself into and run himself into early day two capital potentially. Mm-hmm. And that'd be huge. And I think he can be a very, very productive back in the NFL in the right situation. And could, like I said, play himself into that early day two range. Um, the other two are Rashad White. I, he's an interesting one, Arizona State back, because uh, Demonte Trainum was kind of the guy that the Devi and Dynasty community was looking at as going to be, you know, the next big thing coming out of ASU. But Rashad White is really kind of usurped him um, and taking advantage of, you know, Trainum. He, he hasn't been healthy and he's he's lost a lot of fumbles, so he's taking advantage of that. He's a dual threat, really really good receiver. Um, really good after contact as well. So he was a two year Juco guy. Um, and now he's kind of really come on like game busters, man. He's, he's killing it the last few weeks. So I'm really interested to see, you know, how he tests, um, and how the NFL kind of views him. And the last guy is a guy I've been on for three years and I'm finally kind of seeing the benefits and that's Keonta Ingram, um, out of USC. So he was a Texas, Texas guy transferred to USC, obviously, you know, King Bajan's over there. Mm-hmm, sure, um, so, I mean, you, how, how many touches are you going to get? Right. When, you know what I mean? And, and he's that not guy's Bajan special. Robinson. That guy's special. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he's not Bajan. Right. No one's Bajan. But he's got the NFL size. Or my, he he's moves like Ramondre Stevenson. Similar build to he, he came into USC. You know, he played at Texas at 235 pounds, 6'1", 235. Big dude, big fella. Um, I sorry, six feet. I think he's five eleven, six feet. But he's big guy. I think he he's playing right now around uh, 215, uh, 220, Slimmed down a bit. Looks quick. Um, he's got that. He's got that job on kind of a stranglehold now. Um, he's in with committee the first couple weeks of the year, but uh, he looks good. I, I think his, you know, his skill, um, his skill as a mover in the open space is huge for his size. I think that's the one thing that kind of jumps off the tape. Really, really good receiver too, on the backfield. Um, really good on angle and option routes too. So I think that's going to be something to look out for too in the middle routes. I think he's going to be a either late day two pick or early day three pick if he tests out. All right. All right. Good stuff there. Appreciate. Uh, I, I, Ingram was not on my radar for sure. Mm-hmm. So nice, nice. Uh, see, picking one up there like that. Um, We'll get. Let's move to tight ends now. Hold on, hold on. Okay, real quick. Any love from a man, Zonovan Bam Bam Knight? It, yeah, I like Knight. I, right? I think it's funny because all these there's like about a list of six or so guys that are, it's just how is the NFL going to view them? We'll know that from the. I think the Senior Bowl is going to be massive. There's a lot of seniors this year because of COVID. We have a ton of transfers. Like I think all the guys I named on that list are transfers of some sort, either Juco transfers or Rashad White, Charbonnet and Ingram are uh, transfers from UC, um, UCLA. I mean, sorry, Michigan to UCLA and um, um, Texas to USC. Um, Senior Bowl is going to be massive this year. Um, so this year, um, people should be heavily, heavily paying attention to Senior Bowl practices and how those look. Those are usually live streamed too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in some capacity. So they that's put a lot of to cut ups too, like every senior hard, rep dude. from this guy or whatever. You can, yeah. you can see a lot of mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And that's really going to be really important to watch because this is a really good group of guys um, from the running back position. So that'll be interesting to see. But yeah, how they test too. I mean, just to see not so much their athleticism because play speed matters more than time speed. But is the NFL going to move them up or down? Right. That's the one thing we can kind of predict from that type of stuff. You know, we see it every year where guys just blow up at the combine, like Brashad Perriman a year is back when he wasn't anything in college as a receiver, right? right. He didn't do much at all. Darius Hayward Bay, we remember the, that debacle. <laughs> sure. Blows up the combine, like, and then first round draft pick. Yeah, right. Happens all the time. So we're looking at guys that kind of ascend or descend. Um, if you will, and, and kind of see how the NFL is going to view them. But um, it's an interesting class, man. I mean, Knight's one of those two where it's – Yeah, so shit. my in-laws could, both went to NC State, and they nice. love 
watching NC State football. It's it's great and it sucks because like they really are into football, but they'd rather watch NC State play some terrible ACC team than a, a top ten matchup over on Fox. You know, uh, so but I, I oblige, and I've seen a lot of NC State, and I you know both those running backs. Person he pops sometimes too, but Knights Knights eligible, and and uh, he. Was listed at two oh six. I listened to an interview. He's up to two twelve. Like put on awesome. another six pounds of muscle. Um, he's slated. They they think he can run a mid four four. Like he's. He, I think he ran a four four five in 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 high school. Um, he's got some juice. Can kind of get to the edge. Has forty two catches up to this point in his career. You know, just a a guy that that looks like a solid little running back. Someone you might be able to get late. I just wanted to throw his name out there because I, I like that man. Yeah, it's a good. That's a good one. I think he's gonna be probably. I mean, if he tests well, I mean. Probably early day three, late day two guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, um, and, and you know, when it comes down to these later round running backs, I don't even care. Like Elijah Mitchell was a late round pick. We yeah, love we loved him. We love the skill set. We didn't like how muddy it was, but we like the the system, the ecosystem that Shanahan creates in the running game, and and the fact that a, a coach that we respect liked the player that we liked and grabbed him, it elevated him up for oh, us, and you know we have Elijah Mitchell man. on every single team, and he was a late round pick in yeah, the NFL hand draft. In glove, hand in glove fit there too. I mean, I, I wasn't high on Mitchell, but I mean, he could not have gone to a better. Mm better ecosystem better environment from to succeed that's what he is man he's a runway back he is one cut he to his a runway. detriment he's full yeah. speed the whole time dealing right. with little he didn't grade out well at all because he's a he's bad laterally yeah he's, he doesn't doesn't he doesn't do a lot but the one thing he does that offense does really well and that that means a lot so a lot of people have their bias behind the type of backs that they like Sometimes it really works out well. Sometimes it does not work out well. In Elijah Mitchell's case, Mitchell's case it's working I mean, out. It's working out pretty well. 100%. Um, before we move on to the tight ends, I did want to run back to the receivers real quick. Um, if George Pickens wasn't injured, where would he kind of stand? And, and will he, you think he'll come out? Will he play again? Or, or like kind of where would he stand in this hierarchy? I mean, I think it's tough. I <sighs> I think he, if I was him, I would go back to school. Okay. Because the simple fact that, you know, you're not, he, he's, he's not healthy for one. Mm -hmm. For two, what has he really shown recently that he's, that he's the same player, same caliber player that he was early on in his career? We don't know. Right. So that's the tough thing is. Yeah can he show that at a pro day? Is he healthy enough to do a pro day? Um, is he healthy enough to show well at a pro day? Yeah. Um, where would he rank if he was hundred percent healthy and the same player he was, I think he'd be beh- right behind the, the start of that next tier. I think, Okay. Um, I, I think he's definitely behind, you know, Burks, London, Wilson. Um, I think he's in that kind of next tier. Yeah. Um, I brought him up because I knew that, you know, he was one of the higher up guys before coming into this season before he got injured. Like it was it took an air out of a lot of people's sales of maybe saying, you know, this could have been the, a lot of people's Devi number one guy receiver wise or, you know, I don't I know a lot of people liked him. So I wanted to bring his name up and see what you thought. No, about that's, him. Yeah, no that's smart of you. I mean, he's he's yeah. I mean, I remember my um, home league. That's a Devi league. I mean, he was taking this. He was taking the first round. Yeah. Like he's a, he's a stud, but health is going to be the biggest question mark for him. Um, Quick derailing. How do, how do the, I'm not, I'm not in a single Debbie league. How how does that work? You draft like incoming freshmen every year to your, to your existing Debbie? It gets super crazy. So in my home league, what we do is, so we have a six round Debbie draft every year and how it works is you can draft either incoming rookies. So like, let's say this last year, you can draft like, Shipley. I don't know. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson was the one on one because you know the previous year before when we started the league, like Najee Harris and Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase and you know Fields and Lawrence, those guys are already taken. Um, but with Devy Leagues, you can take guys in high school or in college. High school. But that's a, that's in that's it. Oh, dude, yeah. Someone took um uh freaking Arch Manning. Uh hilarious. Um <laughs> There's a dude in our league who's known notorious for doing that too, which is super funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you could take guys who are in um in high school. I mean, dude, someone took Bajan, and is can you get a yeah. middle schooler? 
How far can we, we go? We this? haven't. <laughs> we haven't seen anything that, like below the age of I think. 16, I think, has been the, the 16 youngest. 16 is the statute of. I women. think that's been the youngest. I do. We could get a fucking kindergarten. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the guy could be. We always I joke that one guy in our league does. He, he, like, we send him, like, fucking tweets all the time. It was, I saw some like a, little kid that was compared to Derrick Henry on some yes, Twitter yes. post where he was just stiff arming all the other little Yes, kids yes and, we sent him that one. Like, we let sent me him get that, that guy one. on my yeah. Debbie yeah. team. We're like, do you know his name? Like, yeah, there's no names on the back of those jerseys. Who is that? John Smith, South Middle School. Yeah, like, number five. But um, yeah, right. Running back class of 2033. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, that's how they kind of work, though. You can, but like your taxi squad. I mean, ours is only, I think, got like well, I like guess five or six person taxi. So like, if and you're not in your taxi squad, but on your active roster, so it's like you can't. You know, every year you can't just go, oh, I'm going to take all these freshmen. And then sooner or later, three years go by and like, oh, shit, these four freshmen have to go on my active roster. We, you know, it's not right. good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's fun. I highly recommend it because it gets you so much more ingrained into collegiate football. Like I found myself on Saturdays watching Will Shipley and Malik Willis. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, get a ticket to the Will Shipley show. That's for sure. <laughs> go Tigers. I actually... I like I, he's did it. He can play and he track star in high school, too, mm, by the way. Love that. Did my homework on a little specialty. Yeah, man. He's a he's a stud. I'm a fan of him. One more receiver before we move on and, and try to wrap this thing up here. Um, we, we all watched a lot of Rondell. And then if you watched any Rondell, you saw the other guy on the other side, David Bell. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about Bell. He's in that tier with um. he's going to be probably right outside that first tier. Yeah. Uh, how did I forget David Bell, man? He's just, dude, he's he's for shot bait. I mean, he's Allen Robinson. That's what he is. Like, he's just a yeah. super steady, number one target, doesn't make a ton of mistakes, isn't super flashy by any means, man, but he's just, he's a, he's a dude's a baller. I mean, he's going to be a number one target right away. He's going to be the, the apple of a contending team's eye. Because they're going to need a guy like that. Dude, the Patriots would love David Bell. Just seems like a super safe fucking dude. Well, now I'm out on David Bell if the Patriots (laughs) like him. Because I don't want another Nikhil Harry. He's a, oh, no, 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 he's not Nikhil Harry. Harry. Um, But uh, he's, he's good, man. I mean, he's just super safe, like you said. Just a, just a steady football player. I mean, that's what we got when we got Rashad Bateman. I mean, Mm -hmm. people were like, people love Bateman. Until he weighed in. Yeah. Then they're like, like, oh, wait, so he's big. not that big. <laughs> yeah. And then they he's were out. But kick and play. Yeah. yeah but, um, but, um, but yeah, same vein as Bateman and got like guys like Allen Robinson. Just, dude, those are your just steady Eddie football players, man. Yeah. These are your guys week in, week out. You know what you're going to get. Except for Allen Robinson this year. Was it? Thought it was going to be his best year. <sighs> yeah, man. You're telling me I was a Bears fan. It's tough to watch. Got a second um, half of the season coming back. Maybe after the bye, they figure some shit out. He's playing this week, though. Yeah, I, think he's playing I don't this think week. he's going to play. He, he his, I, I saw him hurt his hamstring in the in the Pittsburgh game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just don't know if. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's going to play. But um, Fields, some, you some promising Fields? some promising moves here with oh, Fields. Dude, the last he's couple so weeks, good. So he's so good. He's so good. Uh, it's ridiculous how good Justin Field is. Yeah. But he's going to be held back Can by uh, by Mister Mister Nat Mister Matt Nagy. Yeah. All right. Well, so Nagy's out of there. You want Nagy out? I'm oh, sorry, I can't help it, Casey. Please. We said we weren't going to ask him about it because we're trying to keep it please. under an hour, which we got 17 more minutes, and who cares about fucking tight ends? <laughs> Let's talk about Justin Fields for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan, man. He, what he's doing with your big fan. Sorry. Oh man, he's he's a stupid good. He he's just he's the savior. But Nagy's got to be out of there. You want Nagy out? He stinks, year. bro. I, I'm not a big Nagy fan. <laughs> I've never been a big Nagy fan. He he's a better head coach than he is anything, but he's not a very good head coach, which is the tough thing. So I don't know. I think he needs to get out of here. I would like um, Byron Left, which would be a, one of the candidates. I would like um, Brian Dable. Be the enemy, pick. maybe. Yeah, be enemy too. Um, Reed won't just, let him go. Huh? Just, just give me someone who who is going to cater their whole entire team around the quarterback and build off Kellen Moore, young just young Justin Fields. Oh, Kellen Moore would be a dream. <laughs> but there's no chance no, Jerry Jones no. lets him. Jerry go. Jones will pay him ten million a year He's, to just. <laughs> oh, he dude, he, Jerry Jones will pay him out of his own freaking pocket. Yeah. Like he's yeah, he's not going anywhere. As long as Dak is in is in Dallas, I think you Kel Morse is in Dallas. Yeah. Just fire McCarthy and let him run yeah, the show. Yeah, I know. What are we doing? 
Get that. He basically no runs the show anyway. Yeah, that's here. fair. McCarthy's just Let showing McCarthy the be the fall guy when they have bad clock management and some other things going on. And, exactly. And do right? his thing. See, Kellen Moore just gets the less stressful <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah. it's just good. Yeah, yeah. How do you not have a guy being like, yes, take a timeout right now? Or no, don't take a timeout. Like, how do you not have a guy? Tell me. I don't know if, you know, if, if you're Mike McCarthy, it's it. You know, it's an ego thing, right? It's Him like, and Reed, too, be... man. Like, dude, like, the, like I'm all, like, I'm all for bashing analytics because the, the, because because the way they go about it, I'm, I'm but I'm for analytics. Like I want to know them, but in like in the game situations, that's what it's they're there for. And oh, like the, the math works out, Bo. You take a time out here or you don't. It's that simple. You don't have a guy that can tell you that. Like your ego. No, no, no. I don't ask you what you're eating for dinner. You know, like I, <laughs> right. Andy Reid doesn't want to be told to take a time out here, like because. He's like, I, you're gonna, I, I'm going to get to dinner later, I guess, if I take a time out. He, I don't fucking know what the deal is, but why can't these guys figure out clock management know, in 2021? I don't have the answers to those questions. That's a tough one. <laughs> get rid it, just, of it. it drives me nuts, though, when I watch it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, especially it. when like teams it. like just burn. Who was it this last weekend who they're down like three scores and they just burn two timeouts? with like, Mike, bro, like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Your players want to go home. Right. Like, Let's like, keep it moving here. You're down 32. We're like, getting smoked. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, your backup getting reps is not that important. He's like 36 years old. Right. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, but, but yeah, man, it's just a, it's a strange world sometimes. All right. Well, let's get to these tight ends real quick so we can end with a little quarterback question here. But um, is is our Trey McBride and Isaiah likely this year's kind of top two tight ends? Or you got somebody else in there? What, what are you What are you thinking here? Uh, I think it's Jalen Weidermeyer. Uh, Texas A&M guy. Texas A&M. That's quite yeah, a last tight name. End. Yeah, it is, man. Uh, he, he's pretty good. Um, I don't think I don't think any of these guys are like studs, in my opinion. Like this is kind of like that 2020 class, and we had like Cole Komet mm. as tight end one, basically coming up. Hit, Your hit boy, him. right, he, Bear? What? He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He, He's all right. He's um, him and okay Adam case. Troutman, like, yeah, it, you know, like it, it's not a class that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great class. It's just, it's a pretty okay class. Like, I think you're going to see Weidermeyer, if he tests well, be a first rounder. Um, first rounder in the NFL or in rookie drafts? He means NFL. Well, oh, the NFL okay. draft. He's not, and if you're not in tight end premium, you shouldn't be taking any of these guys in the first. Okay, like, that was basically my main 18, question. Even with, well, let's say tight end premium because we're usually trying to talk and promote and I advocate mean, for tight end premium. It here. always depends too for me in tight end premium leagues. Like it's like, oh, okay, like we need to draft tight end. Only draft the tight end if they're in a tight end centric offense. Yes, yeah, they're getting the like, targets. It's not a tight end centric offense. Don't draft tight end. Like sure. it's just or a high scoring offense. Right. Like that's just. I mean, pretty basic. Like if you, if you're playing for as much as I love Pat Fryer, you like, you know, you play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm like, yeah, you're not going to score that many points. So it's like, yeah, well, man, this, the, the ceiling's not. Yeah. Noogie Burger. Yeah, exactly. No, Fryer. no Claypool, no Claypool, no Juju. He's their red zone like, machine right now. Eric Ebron got hurt too. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. He is a red zone. He's pretty good. I, I kind of like, I, I do like big Pat though. He's solid. Um, but yeah, I think Isaiah likely is going to be interesting too. Yeah, I think he plays he's in a my real offense guy. at Coastal. Yeah, uh, really good, really good athlete. Yeah, um, he's, but he's more of he's more of those. He's more of that like that tweener right. tight end receiver that but, we're but seeing see, nowadays. But see, I think that's what you want right now to build to be like. I do those, agree. Those centric offenses are built more around those kind of guys. Who, yeah, you're gonna maybe yes. block a little to keep somebody honest, but you're a you're receiver at ours. Yep. Right. Yeah. And man. and likely like looking at when you were doing all the pits research last year, he was the guy that, that popped up in all of those scores. As far as PFF, all the grading, all of the, all of the, um, you know, contested catches and downfield percentage and all these other, you know, nice uh, statistics that are, you know, advanced statistics um, for for, through PFF likely was always there. And Hunter Long was always there. Um, So, you know, and and that and if you I bet, bet the Chanticleers probably every week last last year. And so I watched a lot of uh, Coastal Carolina football and that dude was just always balling out. Just, he's good, man. He um, can play. So he, he'd probably be my pick. And then Trey McBride seems to be somebody who's maybe coming on a little bit more this year. Right. Um, but so why Meyer's your guy right now. You like him. 
Yeah, I, th- I think he's. I think he's the one I think's going to draft the highest. Okay. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see kind of how these guys test too athletically. Sure. Uh, tight end's a super super important position I think for athletic testing, um, because you know you have to be you have to have a certain level of surf le- surface level surface level athleticism to, to play against NFL linebackers. Right. Good NFL linebackers. Well, yeah, uh, it's and, not like it's not like running back where it's you know you have an offensive line in front of you. If you're a good decision maker, you good movement skill, you can you know make some guy nothing there. But if you're a tight end, you're one on one against yeah one of some of the best linebackers in the NFL. Like if you, you know, freaking Warner's Red Warner, you, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, yeah, I don't know what you're gonna do about that. So yeah, um, but yeah, um, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, the. Next year's class, we won't jump into the 2023 class. I mean, Michael Mayer, circle Michael Mayer. He's a top yeah. 10 pick in the NFL draft. Kids is absolute monster. Yeah, again, I think I think the, the tight end, like you said, being athletic and being important and maybe being a little bit more of a receiver, it – you know, helps again, build towards the being the tight end centric person, because he that's the reason that they're so useful and so great is because the mismatch that they create on the field, because you can't really put a linebacker on them to cover them unless you have those few elite guys like Fred Warner and, and such that can cover, you know, kind of those kind of guys, or you got to put a DB on them. And, you know, there's not too many DBs in the league. that can hang with a six, four, 240 pound beast uh so right that's kind of yeah 100 that's kind of what you're 100%. what you're wanting there and I, I like you know we, we talk about it all the time it seems like the league is more and more figuring that out and moving a little bit toward find trying to find that uh sort of guy and they're, they're you know they're not out there a whole lot so oh no no uh, those are those are rare players all right well let's wrap up with this question um doesn't really seem to be a lot of love for the quarterback in this class um after kind of talking about some of the top guys in this class how would they stack up to a super flex draft as far as quarterback? You know, quarterbacks are usually the kind of the top end of the uh, super flex draft. But then there's a few years there where it's kind of like, ah, eh, who do we take? Is it should I take Saquon Barkley here? You know, number one, we know we know there's not maybe a running back that's on Saquon and JT's level, but is there a receiver or is the quarterback field just you know not quite good enough to to elevate up there? If, if you're kind of catching what I'm laying down here, yeah, no, for I think it's really interesting too because what you're gonna do in this with this class is either you're gonna hit the home run or you're gonna strike out. I think there are there's two quarterbacks in particular that that for me, if I'm on the clock at one on one, I'm probably taking, and that's Malik Willis and Matt Corral in that order. I think too. And that's Liberty and um, Ole Miss. Correct. Yeah, I think the thing with a guy like Malik Willis in that regard is super raw. Mm-hmm. I mean, but he has all the traits and tools that you want. Gotten better um, every year. Yeah, and that's the thing too is he didn't play when he was at Auburn, right? I mean, he was behind Bo Nix, mm-hmm. you know, for whatever reason. Like, son, <laughs> but you see, you yeah. know, you know, Justin Fields, you know, behind Jake fucking Fromm, right? Yeah, I mean, right. What, Jake Fromm, like, come on. Um, but same thing. And Transfers Liberty um, has does a great job his first year um, under Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze, baby. Uh huh. And then you know, this year was the year for me that you know I, I stream Liberty games every weekend. So I'm like, He's I want to see, him. I want to see how he's improving, what he's doing well, what he's not doing well. By no means am I a quarterback guy, but I want to see what this kid actually is. Like, what's he? What's what's his makeup? Right? What kind of player is he? And out of every quarterback in this class, I'm the most impressed with the physical tools of Malik Willis. I think he has the highest ceiling of any offensive player in this whole entire class mm-hmm. because the simple fact that. He has the ability to change the game as a runner and have a he can a rushing attack designed around him. There's not many quarterbacks in the NFL. There are two right now in Jalen Hurts and Lamar. Lamar Jackson that the running game is designed around. Not because I mean that both of them are great runners. I mean Lamar is one Lamar is the best running quarterback in NFL history. Sure. But because of how smart they are at the ball. Mm-hmm and how smart they are as runners and how natural that comes to them. Malik Willis is in that same vein um, of player, and that's really important because those guys have a longer leash to get to their ceiling as a passer. Mm -hmm. They have that elite level rushing skill to fall back on while they kept, while they kind of catch up to everybody um, as a passer. We saw Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson was not a good passer coming out of college whatsoever. 
ever. Right. And you can make a case that he's not that great now, but he's so good as a runner that it masks sometimes his average right. skill as a passer. Yeah. Average. Um, I think he's. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Relative. Right. Um, but I think that's what we're looking at with Malik Willis is he has the arm talent um, to be a prolific passer down the field. Does he, he doesn't play in the NFL scheme, plays in a one reader, basically a, what we call a one reader run. If your first read's not there, you're taking off and you're going. Yeah. That's what Jalen Hurts is running right now, right? <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what he, he does. There's no, you know, a lot of times the kind of the key, the, the key to that is you look at how involved the running back is in the passing game. Not makes sense. Yeah, right. right. Because he doesn't get that far through the progression to get back down to this. Exactly. And and Philadelphia, not at all, especially when they started running um, that type of system. And really, you haven't Um, seen a whole lot of Lamar check down to the running back either. Mm, Albeit, I think he'd rather take off. Albeit, they lost a a million running backs and maybe you would have seen a little bit more this year. Maybe they just don't trust the running backs there right now. Uh, but he's also like, I can go get six yards on the f- with my feet. Why do I need yeah, to take right. a risk throwing the See, ball? Yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. So, um, I like Matt Crowell too. I, I think he's a gamer man. He's one of those guys that you know is the d- dudes in the locker room we're gonna go to war with. Um, good athlete, not great. Um, he can make all the throws. It depends on I, I don't know what NFL offenses offensive quarters think of him. I think he's a top five pick though. I think him and Willis both are yeah. um, in the right system. You got Hugh Freeze Sam and Lane Howell. Johnson, baby, that you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. Got him um, in a good Sam system. Sam Howell's the, the next guy. Um I'm not as high on Howell because I watched his first couple years looked great. Right. Right. Ecosystem was really strong. There hasn't yeah, did he had everybody around him? Yeah. He hasn't there hasn't been the improvement that we've seen from, in my opinion, from Willis and Corral as a passer. He, you know, I mean, he's just grinding out yards as a runner. Mm-hmm. He's not even, the thing is, he's not, and from NFL terms, he's not that great of an athlete. Yeah. Which is the tough thing, too, is he's getting a lot done on the ground. It's like, everybody's like, okay, he's a really good runner. Yes, for a collegiate quarterback. Yeah. Like, could Tim Tebow make it as a, runner at the NFL level? The answer was no. Yeah, not really. No. He's not he's not athletic enough. Yeah. That's just simple. I mean he's that's just how it is. You know, mm-hmm. these guys are bigger, faster, stronger. You know, when freaking Devin Bush is chasing us on the sideline, I mean you're not getting away. Right. So uh he'll be a first round pick too. Uh Getty Pickett um too as well as good pocket passer. Uh Carson Strong too yeah pocket guy really good arm. I think he has probably the best um, I think he has the best skill set as a thrower in this class Carson right Strong. now. Yeah, that's, current that's skill set in terms of yep, touch anticipation, um, ability to hit guys in stride. I mean, he's he's a good he's a I mean, he's a good floor quarterback. Yeah. I think he is I think we have some Andy Daltons in this class. I think he might be one of those with a little bigger arm. Just I can just play. I mean, he's, he, you know, Mac Jones, we saw last year. He's, you know, freaking pages have won seven games, right? Sometimes the guys who can manage the game can win the game. Sure. And that's just, and that's just the nature of the beast. You don't have to go off of the super flashy guys at all times, but you know, for me, if I'm in to make it short, if I'm in a rookie draft and I'm on the clock, I'm, I'm taken. If I'm, if I'm drafting one one first, I, my team was probably awful. So I'm taking the upside. I'm taking the guy like Malik Willis that could, you know, Imagine if he ends up being a Jalen Hurts type fantasy option. Yeah. Like a Matt, like we're taking that every day of the week. Right. And I think that's what he can be and can offer you a pretty dang high floor as a rusher, which is going to be really, really key for him in his development. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way we uh, look at it a lot of the times too. If there's a, if there's guys who we think that can play the quarterback position reasonably well, but then have the, the legs as the upside um, that fantasy wise, you're going to get a good, uh, floor most weeks, week in, week out. So, that, you know, that that was Fields this year and Trey Lance uh, this year. And then, you know, you probably don't really have, obviously, a Lawrence is a, is a guy that everybody's been looking at for a while, but you don't have that that kind of generational no, passer no. in this in this uh, particular class. Um, so you would say Willis and, and, and um, Matt Carroll from Ole Miss would be maybe your 1-1 one, one and 1-2, one, and then maybe you would probably yeah. pick up with a receiver from there on out, maybe a Burks. It's early, you know, so 
Oh, after all that, I think we lost him. Mm. Maybe he'll be back. Come back, Angelo. We pretty much made it. We did pretty much make it. Um, and uh, just at an hour. Angelo, thanks for coming on, buddy. Let's see if he comes back. Do, 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 do. Hey, we got Angelo back. All right. <laughs> you finished strong here. Almost done. Lost you right there at the end. Love it. Okay, yeah, man. We got we got to get rolling. Just prolonging the finish. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Where I think, were we? I think we just left off with just, you know, you, you, you'd probably take Willis and, and uh, Corral there, and then it would, would it be like a, probably a receiver next? You'd probably go those two guys first. So sticking with some quarterbacks and super flex and then maybe a receiver next. Yeah, uh, Traylon Burks would be my next guy. Okay. Uh, I think he has the highest ceiling of all the receivers in this class. Is he the best mover in this class? The best mover? Ooh, that's a good question. Nah. Actually, Garrett Wilson probably. Yeah. Okay, okay, but he's I'd not number in one. Terms of, he's not number one. Okay. I, I think, I think... He's got that CD in him. I think what, um, what Burks does at... How well Burks moves at his size, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I just Ray speed G, score's got to be like 240%. Dude, it's so it's stupid. Ray G said he's he reminds me of Josh Gordon. I I can totally see that. I can kind of agree. Yeah. Um just physical on the special. Field. <laughs> yeah, on the field. Let's hope so. <laughs> let's, um let's hope so, man. Um for all the dynasty dynasty managers out there. Yeah. Um but yeah, he's a he's a stud. I mean, him or Drake London I think would be the next two and then Wilson. Um, then the backs, uh, I'm big on just kind of sticking towards ceiling, especially if you're a team that needs help, um, long-term, mm-hmm. like if you're, a, if you're not a contender, taking a running back is in my opinion, silly. If you're not a contender, because your windows for four years, five years, Yeah. if you get a elite level receiver, I mean, like if you got CD lamb, like Jonathan Taylor's gonna be great, by the way, I took. I traded back to take C. Lamb over Jonathan Taylor with my leagues because mm. I think I'm going to get mm. a decade, mm. a decade of CD. But she could be winning chips with that, JT. That's a, but that's a tough thing. We but I got like another chips. Pick we want to win chips. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about four or five years from now, man. I want to win a ship. Yeah, it's true. But that team's contending, so we're solid. Yeah, man. yeah. And I got Najee Harris with that pick, by the way. Yeah. Um, All right. So it worked. But I mean, for me, like I'm big on if I'm not contending, I'm gonna take the receiver. Did you take Harris um, over a wide receiver? Where'd you take? Um, where'd you take Harris? It was Devi. Oh, it was, was Devi. So second round. Um, I can't. Re- I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> um, I'm taking the fifth grader from that Twitter so, okay, post. I was gonna like, take Justin Jefferson. Actually, I remember this. I remember this. But uh, he he got taken like a pick or two before me. I ended up taking Najee. And then taking Devonte Smith, I think like in the third round or something. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I think for me, it's it's kind of like Traylon Burks is. If you're in a one QB league, I think it's Traylon Burks for yeah. sure. Well, it's a good thing we didn't lead with that, and you and didn't start off with that quarterback question, and it led to this thing where you talked about you know the the receiver and the running back situation and silliness because that would have been a thirty minute derailment of a very thorough and long conversation. But we will end it there and and talk about that at another date because uh, it's late. And I wanted to keep this just about some uh, rookies right now and, and not necessarily about, you know, how how to draft and what your style right. is. Um, but we really appreciate you RBs, coming on, man. Maybe. And you're always great. Yeah, you're man. one of our favorites. And uh, like I said, once we're knee deep in this stuff, we'll, we'll probably do maybe a receiver and a running back show separately to spend some more time kind of diving into these guys. And, you know, a lot of the feedback we get is when you, you got, you come on or another guy like you is, is that people like that. We don't just agree with everything that, that the, sure. that whoever we're having on <laughs> it's just like, Oh yeah, yeah. He's great. And, yeah, absolutely. Like there, there could be some pushback if we have disagreement. Everything my guest says is the right thing. <laughs> yeah. It would, you know, wasn't necessarily the purpose of this show. I just wanted to kind of get I like that. Yeah. A surface sure. level uh, deal here. So when we're, when we're, when we're a little more equipped to be on your level, uh, right. we'll, we'll have you back. And, um, we appreciate it. It's been, you've been our, our definitely our most um, annual guest. So. Biggest repeat offender for sure. Hey, man, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you got, that, that's one of the reasons I like you guys so much is it's, we can actually discuss and that, and that's a big deal. Yeah. I think, you know, sometimes guests are the, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, like 
Right. No, like I, I like being disagreed with. Like, it, right. I think like like having that kind of discord is a really cool thing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but thank you guys for you know always keeping it real and and being straight like that. So, I uh, appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah man. man. Look at that. Keep keeping it real, baby. That's what yeah. we're doing over here. One hundred. <laughs> we always straight we always fuck around. When we say something. We'll just be like, yeah, we're just keeping it real. One hundred. Yeah. You know, just straight facts over here. Because if you why. say those words, that must mean that it's true. It must mean it's real. Right. Yeah, yeah that's what that's 100%. what we're going with. We're just speaking it to it into that's existence. Funny. Yeah. Well, um, no, nah, we can't thank you enough for coming on, Angelo, and giving us some of your time. You can find him at the Twitters, Angelo underscore fantasy. Check him out, his website, angeloanalysis.com. Uh, tons of breakdowns and just, just the way the way the players move, baby. It's all about the movement. And, so, uh, it's absolutely going to help you in the rookie draft. Absolutely. And uh, so if you're, uh, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, hit us with that subscribe subscription. Give me that scribey. If you're listening on uh, the you podcast. Got a, you got a YouTube over there, Angelo? I don't. I think that's, that might be the next that's the step. Next so we'll step. See. Hopefully we'll when we see, see we'll in, in April, March, February, that, that's something that we can plug for you. Maybe we you, can you get, like get on an there. Angelo feature on our channel or something. I don't know. <laughs> just throw something out. I don't know. All right, buddy. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all listening. Yeah, man. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Peace.